All right, hello, we're gonna make sure that we are focused. I can't really see you without my glasses at all. I see like blurry colors. So we're just gonna roll with it. But hi, how are you doing? It's been a while. Um, uh, 2021 has been absolute chaos. And so I wanted to talk with you a little bit about what my year has been like. Um, and I know a lot of you have also had really difficult years with 2021. Um, I feel like 2020 was so terrible. And then 2021 is like, hold my beer. Like, oh my goodness. So a lot of things have happened. This was Reading Women's last season. Uh, we adopted another Corgi. Um, I've had a lot of big family changes and illness. And I've experienced a lot of escalation in some of my condition. So I wanted to chat with you about that and then kind of how that's going to affect my reading for 2022 and then hopefully the content that I will be putting up. Um, so yeah, so let's chat. Um, first, I mean, last, last video I put up was for Women in Translation Month, which was wonderful. I love hosting that with Jen and Matthew and we read some excellent books and there was a live show that we recorded. So I guess it wasn't live. Anyway, I'll put the links down in the description so you can go check that out. Um, but originally I had, I had thought I would do like one video a week, uh, but that's not how it turned out at all. Um, I want to be very transparent and I, I did not expect that my mental health would take such a big hit in 2020 as a disabled person. It just didn't, I just didn't think about it. Right. It wasn't like I heard it and was like, oh, that can't be true. No, it was like, I just didn't click. It didn't click that as a disabled person, I would be carrying more emotional weight. People from different kinds of marginalized communities have been especially hit by this pandemic. Um, what is a really terrible situation is made even more terrible um, because as a disabled person, I am one of the people that are that is considered to have a lower quality of life and we are not prioritized when it comes to life-saving medical care and just seeing all of this in the news just being inundated by it having people shout really like eugenics things on the internet is really appalling and so when i went into 2021 i thought we'd be coming out of the pandemic it's not what happened so my mental health was in the trash along with my body just falling apart so I decided to take a break from YouTube. I, I guess I didn't actually, I didn't actually make that decision. It just happened. Um, and I thought I was going to be getting better. And a lot of this is very blurry now, but around Mother's Day, which is in May um, for us in the US, uh, I got the call that my mom um, was showing symptoms of COVID. And I was obviously very worried. And shortly thereafter, my dad was actually got the official positive test first. And then my brother and then my mom, I can't remember. Uh, but my mom, you know, she has a chronic lung condition. So I was terrified. I come from a family that has a lot of health issues, um, a lot of chronic illness kind of things going on. And and so I, I know, I know what that looks like. And I feel like a lot of people were kind of thrown into the deep end of disability this year. People who were not disabled were then became disabled post COVID. And there's been a lot of discussion about that, um, about the rise in, in the community and how more and more people are joining the community. But um, I was, I was thought I was pretty prepared having grown up that way. But um, I think it just made it much more of a reality for me. It, it, I knew what, a lot of it would be like in, in some ways, but nothing ever prepares you for something like this at the same time. So obviously all of the feelings, my mom was able to get an infusion. So that prevented her from being hospitalized. And, but my dad ended up being hospitalized for COVID. And I feel it's so easy for us to get callous about the numbers around COVID about the people who have been um, have tested positive or passed away. And, but those numbers are actually people. And when that person is your person, it's a much, it's a much bigger deal. Obviously many of you have experienced this as well. I know I'm not alone on this, but still it, it feels as terrible as, as you think it would. Um, so I, I woke up every day for about a, about a week, five days to a week of wondering if, I would, I would be getting the call 
and being hundreds of miles away from your family is not ideal but also being a high risk person who is not fully vaccinated yet it was just a whole a whole thing um i am so grateful that my dad did walk out of the hospital not everyone did um but he did and, and so my parents um have been dealing with long COVID, but they're feeling much better um still very tired and obviously like it's not it, it just it's horrific just as you think it would be um around the time my dad was hospitalized my grandmother went into hospice and we already knew she had a terminal illness but again nothing really can prepare you for that i, I feel like we had some time for mental preparation which i think was helpful but still um she was not doing well and they called in the family in july uh, and my dad and mom were able to see her in hazmat suits and like all this stuff. So thankfully they were able to be with her during this time. And she passed away in September. Um, she's my last grandparent. And I, I feel like the period from May to September was just one thing after another because it was, it was, and no one really prepares you for that. And I would talk to people and they seemed to think I had everything together. I, 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 I was falling apart. I did fall apart. And so I think that it's incredibly important. I, I want to, I want to mention that because I feel like so often we look at people from the outside and we think that they have it all together. Look how brave they are. Look how inspirational they are or something like that. In reality, they're just as broken or falling apart as everyone else. And I didn't feel at the time that I was allowed to fall apart. I definitely did not feel like I was allowed to fall apart. Uh, but my body did anyway, and my mental health did anyway. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Like, it was really rough. And so many of you have experienced that. I've, I've really appreciated people sharing their experiences on YouTube, particularly other disabled people, uh, talking about how difficult this has been as a disabled person. Um, so. I, I, yeah, I, I did not know. I had, I had like anxiety projects. I researched my family bloodline like back to like the 1700s. Apparently, like we came over from Germany like in the 1500s. I didn't even know there was that research done. It was like a whole thing. And that's how like I would process is I would throw myself into anxiety projects. One of those anxiety projects, um, late July, early August, was making a spreadsheet filled with possible places where our next corgi could come from. Uh, I was very passionate about finding a responsible breeder and those are few and far between. And so I found a breeder who had puppies uh, that would soon be available. And so we were able to get one. And so let me introduce, I guess, this is kind of an awkward introduction. We'll do it again at, at a better time, but uh, Gwen Lian, is our our corgi she is oh my word she's a cardigan welsh corgi the corgis with the tails and um she came home two days after my grandmother's funeral and it was all of the feelings for sure also she's a terrible puppy like oh my stars she cried for the first two weeks because of separation anxiety um, because she'd been, you know, she was raised in the house of, of, uh, where she came from and, and with a bunch of other dogs and like all this stuff. And she is very social butterfly. So being reduced to having only two humans and one very sulky, uh, annoyed Pembroke Welsh Corgi, who is six years older than her, was not something that she was interested in at all. <laughs> so she was very, uh, a good adjustment but she is my snuggle bug. She's almost six months old now, and we've had her since the end of September, and I, I love her. Um, once we got out of the teething stage, it was pretty great, and she is the thing that I needed. Um, and so this ended up being Reading Women's last season, and so as I was prepping all of those materials for the end of the year, I had this puppy that was a chaos whirlwind but I, I very much love her. She's very smart, very little practical intelligence. She's like a golden retriever trapped in a corgi's body. Um, she likes to chew on the tripod so that she's not here right now. 
Um, but yeah, I, I want, I want to, I want to say all of this, and I want to present this, I don't know, reality of my 2021 because I feel like sometimes we think that people have it all together when in reality they're just they're falling apart and maybe that's you I, I feel like I'm always caring for other people and trying to help them and let them know that they're appreciated but I ignore myself and I don't choose caring for myself much at all um, my sister-in-law is amazing at skincare and so I, I got into skincare for the first time in my entire life. I've never done anything. Um, but my mom, she got really into skincare after she got COVID. And so, cause that was a way to care for herself. And so we both got into skincare. We have, we use different products, but it's nice that we could chat about that. Cause my mom and I are both not the most uh, well-versed in the feminine arts, we'll say. So we gotta just wing it. It's so, uh, yeah, I'm glad that it took, I mean, it took like, you know, for me to be 31 years old before I got into skincare, but here we are and I love it, it's great. Yeah, so I am taking a, a break from full-time work uh, right now and I am just doing my work for Book Riot. I'm a contributing editor now over there, particularly for their audiobooks content. I write their audiobooks newsletter and I do a weekly audiobooks feature for them. And so if you want to go check that out, I will put links down in the description box. I also, as a, just a side project for it's dedicated to my grandparents, I have a project called Read Appalachia. And it's basically just posting books like Appalachian books on an Instagram account and uh yeah it's, it's done so well there's been some articles there's been some articles there's uh I've done I hosted a 100 days in Appalachia's um creators and innovators newsletter it's just some fun things and I didn't really expect that to flourish but I'm so glad it did because um yeah again that's dedicated to my grandparents uh, my Appalachian grandparents and it's been really important to me and a lot of people don't understand why this part of someone's identity might be important I feel like a lot of people don't know anything about Appalachia which is fine I am here to help so if you would like to know more or just see what I've been up to I'll just include a ton of links down in down in the description box and you can go check those out um, all right so what next all right so I'm taking a break, like I said, so I'm trying to chill and read a bunch of backlist books. So I have a few goals that I'm going to go over in another video, but um, I also am going to do my top books of the year. It was a really rough reading year as well, so I'll talk about my reading life um, in a different video. Um, but I just have made so many wonderful friends here on BookTube, and so many of you have reached out. Um, as these big changes in my life have been happening and I, I so I so appreciate that. Moving during a pandemic means that I know like I have one friend here because like I can't, especially as a high risk person, like I can't go out all the time, obviously, and I'd be very careful about that. So I would just say thank you. Thank you for being here on the other side of my screen. Thank you for engaging with my content and um, yeah, I appreciate it. So yeah, so me and my hat massive self are going to be posting some videos. I have no idea, like if it'll be once a week or whatever. We'll see how I feel. Um, every day is new, and uh, but there's so many books, and I have a new library which I did a little video of. Um, I'll link to that TikTok video. Right? Yes, I have a TikTok. It's not big at all. I think about a hundred followers, but I post random things there. So I did like uh, when we first met. When I first met Gwen, it's on there and when Dylan met Gwen and my new library and also these like um what is that the like speeded up version of me unpacking what you see behind you is on TikTok so I will link a bunch of stuff down there we can catch up you can catch up with my life tell me what you've been doing what are some things that I have missed since I haven't been on here let me know all right um that's it for this video again thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one bye friends